Alright guys, I just got a service call for case not holding temp, but it's actually too cold. Look at that, minus 17. This is a frozen, it's a dual temp tub case. So look at this one. Minus 17. This one here, minus 20. This is the case in question, they emptied it. Minus 14. Those are. That's my C rack. That's my system with C6. That's my C rack. So everything that's C related is running cold. Here's my other tub case. See? C rack. Minus 24. Minus 31. So obviously it's a rack problem. So with that said, let's go to the rack. Take a look. All right, so it's a rack C's and Charlie is right here. And I already had it open. I just was kind of going through stuff. So um, my transducer is in the back. Right there. Right now, I am reading. Right now, I am reading. Uh, what's that? 14 psi, and that's my transducer. It's an eclipse because of the clip. That's an eclipse transducer. If it was a standard transducer, it would have just been hardwired in here. You wouldn't be able to detach the wire. It'll be hardwired straight in. That's how you can tell a standard transducer from an eclipse transducer. That little clip. So let me take you back to the. All right, so I'm here at the E2 controller, uh, Rack C E2 number three, and right here, that's how you can tell it's labeled Unit Three. That's this controller is number three. All right, so right now that's my suction 35. When I got here, it was like at 21. So I had all my temperatures running at minus 17, minus 30, you've seen it downstairs. So what I did was I went over on the other side and I put my gauge on, like it is. And look what it's reading right now. It's reading 15 PSI and it's dropping slow. So we got 15 PSI, the actual pressure, and we got 33 PSI. So obviously there's something wrong. So, this is an E2 controller, but these have um, control boards. So, I went over this before in another video, but let me go over it one more time. So, in order to get, it's, it's not, a, it's a different setup. It's not like you can go to inputs and outputs and there's all your boards and all your RO points and AI points. The way they have this setup is different and I'm gonna show you. So, you go to menu. And then you go down to configuration applications, that's number five. You go into that. The next menu, you're gonna go all the way down to it says, it's abbreviated, uh, control IO, which is uh, input output. So you're gonna go into there. And then now you're on, they have a list of all these. See, this is what I don't like about this. They don't name anything so it's a guessing game so i know it's an ai board at least i know that much so i'm going to start off there and just by luck i found it so it was on my first one so p2 200 well p200 e is my um pressure transducer 200 psi e is for eclipse there's my actual well there's my transducer pressure my actual is like 15, I think we see, we see. And then there's also my high pressure, which is the P500E. Um, so we're not dealing with that right now. We're just gonna deal with that. So then, now what I could do is I go and I highlight it. I hit enter. And then I'll go down to setup. And then now I'm in the setup part of it. So, this is just a description of everything. 
but I want to be under this one right here, so I'm going to tab over. And now I see the P200E, you go all the way down. And then I, that, that's my first board, so it's my offset. There's a 15 offset on that. So if I go all the way down, somebody put that, probably me, because there was a issue going on with it before. So I'm going to zero it out. But right now, I'm going to see what happens. Hold on a second. I know it's hard to see because of the reflection. So let me back out. And then I'll zero that. And I'll hit enter. And then I'll hit enter one more time. That locks it in place. So we're going to back out of this. I wish I could read that here. Okay, so it's gonna be that one right there, so it's 10. Now it's at 10 PSI. So we're gonna walk over to the other side on the gauge. And that's at nine. So we're, we're pretty much right on the money, but that's been changed before because there was an issue. And now I have to change it back. So that's telling me that this transducer is not holding its it's um, steady or it's calibration so I'm gonna go ahead and just replace it because it seems like we're gonna be going back and forth all the time so so that's what I'm gonna do let me go ahead and um, I got my transducer right here uh, you can read that but it's uh, 200 and all low pressure is 0 to 200. All high pressure discharge and drop leg, that's 0 to 500. Low pressure is 0 to 200. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up to put it in. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and um, replace this. So I'm going to take this off, front seat this, close it off, and now there's no pressure. So I can just take this off and put it back. I don't have a cable, but usually if you have a cable, run a whole brand new cable all the way to the board because that could also be an issue. So if I come across my cable, I'll go ahead and replace that too. But right now I don't have a cable. So I'm just going to replace this transducer and uh, get it done. So I don't have two hands to work with, so I'm going to turn off my phone and then um, I'll come back when it's all set up. Okay, so right now I got my new transducer. I put some nylog on there. I just took the label off it. It was just, I don't know, it just came off ripped off. So this is a universal, my nylog. Um, so I went ahead and put that on there. I took that out. There's my old one. So then all I gotta do is just um, kind of thread it in. Be careful guys, don't cross thread these. Then uh, when it starts to get real tight, uh, you always want to put two wrenches on it because you don't want to break this uh, this brass fitting right here because that'll really suck. Alright, so it's starting to get a little tighter. So let me uh, get two hands on here and I'll get, get back with you guys. Alright, got it on. I'm going to go ahead and put my clip on. All they do is snap right in and that's why they're called Eclipse. Well that's the way I reference it. So let me go ahead and open that up. Get my service wrench. Gotta open this up.
you want to open this up all the way. this down. You don't have to crank down on these things. You just kind of snug it. Alright, so now this is back up and running. I got a pressure of right now all my compressors shut down because obviously it doesn't need to be that um, low on the pressure. So I got 27 we'll say. And right now I'm reading 28. So that's pretty darn close. 28.75. So I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna go into it. I'm gonna hit setup. And then I'm gonna go over to my setup. And go all the way down. Okay, my offset is zero, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to leave it at zero. Go to my suction groups, which I'm already there. But So I just got my compressor number two just started up. I'm at 2454. 21. 20, so it's dropping. Let's go see what the actual is. So it was 20, now it's a little bit before because it kept dropping. So I think we're good. So that's how you uh, determine a bad transducer. Uh, right away I thought it was my boards offline. Uh, because usually when there's a board offline, you, uh, your compressors will fail on. And it'll turn all your compressors on and then that way it'll drive that suction pressure all the way down. That was my first thought when I first seen those temperatures, all the temperatures like that. So then when I looked at my controller and I actually went to my online, um, everything was green, which meant that everything was online. There was nothing offline. So that indicated to me that it wasn't a board. So then you start looking at your transducer. What else would cause uh, the rack to drive such a low pressure and drive all those temperatures low? So that's something to think about. Um, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Um, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next service call.